To begin with your first posture screen, all you have to do is come up here and hit beginning, new. Decide whether they're male or female. I'm going to keep male. You're going to go ahead and put in their first name. And I'm going to go ahead and put uh, their name is John. Oh, I mis mistyped here. Use the keyboard. John and Doe. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to slide this up. We must put in their height. So we're going to say they're, they're five. 11 and their body weight is we'll say it's 220 now what's optional is their email their phone number and the pain scale uh, sometimes when you're at a screening they might not want to give you this information however it is the best way to um, utilize this app because we're going to be sending the information to them via email as well as if you have a wireless HP e printer you can print on the spot as well directly from your iPad 2 or your iPhone 4 or iPhone 3GS. Um, however, we want to capture their email if possible. So I'm going to go ahead and put one down here. And their phone number if we can because we want to be able to call them back. And most people, even though chiropractic is not about just pain, uh, unfortunately, it's the reason why patients come in to see a therapist or a chiropractor. Um, so we're going to want to rate that on a visual or uh, verbal rating score, 0 to 10, 10 being unbearable bedridden. So we'll just say they're in the middle there. We're going to hit done. Now at this point, you just hit next. And then if you wanted to come back, say you were you had a bunch of people that were going to come in for a health talk in your office and you knew their names, you could set them up in advance. Um, and then hit save and finish the exam later. If you're going to take pictures on the device, you're going to start with the front view and then the right side of the view, the right lateral view. Um, since I'm using an emulator here on, the, on my MacBook, uh, you're not going to be able to see the video of me taking a picture um, using the heads-up display. I'll have another video for that. However, if you want to take the camera picture uh, excuse me, the picture from the camera roll on the phone or the iPad, all you would do is click, uh, click this to off, and by default it's not going to save it, these images back to the camera roll. But if you were taking this from uh, the camera itself in the device, you have the option now to save directly to the camera roll so we have those raw, unedited, unmarked pictures. Okay. So the first thing we do is we're going to hit front. So this is if we had the, the pictures already in there. Now I want to review this part because this is the most misunderstood part of the application. Part of my patent is getting um, the, uh, the references for size of the patient. We already know their height. So it's real important that you put the picture in the center here. okay? And you want to come down here a bit and center the patient and you want to get it to where the top of the head and the bottom of the feet are at this yellow line. This is very, very, very important, especially when you're going to do a comparison. Okay, I'm going to repeat this. This is very, very, very important. Okay, one more time. It's very, very, very important. I belabor that point. I'm making this funny, but it is very important. The reason I'm saying this in advance is because with over 5,000 installations, I'm getting emails constantly on patient on doctors saying that the values from pre-post are slightly different. It's not; it doesn't seem like it's reasonable. And when I look at their exams, they have too much space up here on one and not enough on the other. The patient's not centered, and it was just haphazardly done. So, if you want accurate readings, the head must be at the top, feet must be at the bottom, and do the same way on the patient. Okay? We're gonna hit save. And then now we're going to do the right lateral view. So since I can't take the picture in the camera, I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to come up here. Again, top of the head. We're going to pinch it down, bottom of the feet. Okay. So can you see that? I'm going to squish it down just a little bit again there. Okay. So it's calibrated. Hit save. Now the next step is if you wanted to come back later and do the exam, say you had a whole bunch of people come in, all you would have to do is hit save progress and come back later. Okay or you would hit that next. So if you hit exam history and there's John Doe right here, we're going to click here and you can see it's an unfinished exam. Okay. So if we wanted to add yet another exam, all we would do is hit add new exam if they're already in, the, in there. So we're going to just click here. The information's in there, it didn't change. And this is where we left off. We're going to go ahead and hit next. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to follow right here uh, where it says to put the dots. Okay, so we're going to come in here to the eye, and we're going to come into the other eye, and we're going to come into the nose, right below the nose, symphysis menti. And if they make a mistake, you can come in here later, and you can move the points if you like. I just want to show you, all you have to do is grab the points. Okay, so you could grab the point here, move it over. And if you watch me do this with an iPad, it's very, very fast. But I'm just going to come in here because for education. I'm going to go a little bit slower, so that way you can see. And then we're always going to go left to our right side. Here is mid-rib level for thoracic translation. Okay, approximate the ASIs if they have a belt on. It's a little bit easier to see. And then we're going to go ahead and midfoot, ankle, and midfoot and ankle. Okay, now if you wanted to um, blow this up and correct, you could just come in here and say we wanted to move that point again. Say our staff member made a mistake. Not a problem. They can come in here. And then all we have to do is hit next. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come in here. And notice that the grid was superimposed over the image. We're going to go mid-hip, mid-knee, and ankle. And there we're done. Now we're going to hit next. At this screen, if I had in the settings, if you recall, I, I said to skip the um, where it prompts you to use a credit. I've used a credit, so if I bought 10, uh, I should say 100 credits at $10, cost me 10 cents and Apple made their commission of 3 cents. Okay, so what's nice is that it calculates all the approximate values. Here we have the head is shifted uh, uh, 3 uh, tenths to the right, uh, <clears throat> three tenths of an inch to the right, and then we have the shoulders offset. Now what we did here, just so you know, if you're a posture expert, say you do a lot of CBP, oh, hold on one, here, one second here, say you do a lot of CBP, remove this in here, um, you're going to notice that we separated out the shoulders versus the tilt, uh, the shoulder tilt versus the thoracic cage. And that's because somebody could have a shoulder problem bringing their uh, shoulder up. Um, side view, this is really important right here that you go over with the patient. It's approximate body weight uh, relative to their head uh, approximate weight. The head weighs about 7.5% of their body mass. It's an inch and three, uh, 1.38 inches forward. So the head effectively weighs about 40 pounds. This is probably one of the most useful um, applications of this software is to approximate the head weight because these people usually with forward head posture have upper back and neck pain. Next thing that you're going to do is, and if this is on the iPad, you could ha have this projecting up on a screen, uh, or excuse me, the iPad 2 has an adapter that you can hook up to a TV, an HDMI um, that you can buy from Apple, or a VGA out, and you can mirror the screen. So you could show this to the patient uh, or the prospective patient and, and say that you know the red line's them, green line's normal, can they see that they're not normal? Now the next step is, what do we want to do? Do we want to create a PDF and email it to John? Of course we do. So we're going to go ahead and say that. And then you can see that I have the same email address here as well, but um, if we had multiple email accounts, the blind carbon copy is the one that's going to be sent to the office. This is important because if you have people out in your office that work for you out doing screenings, you want to get a copy of every PDF because you might want to bonus them on the people that come in that they screen. Um, here's a PDF. And if you want to change anything, this is an, an email. You can change it right here if you wanted to. We can go ahead and hit send. Um, if you wanted to save and print the report, we could go ahead and print the report. And on the, the actual version, you're going to have a, uh, an application open up here. So we could open it up in um, iBooks if we wanted to, or say Dropbox. And I'll have a video for that as well, too. So you could sync it right to your computer if you're using Dropbox. This is new, export digitized images. Now, I can go ahead and export just the images themselves. And I'll show you that in just a second. So the images have been sent out to the camera roll. Um, if we wanted to come back and edit a screening, we can go ahead and do that too at any point in time. So if we wanted to come in here and hit edit screening, we could come back and where do we want to edit? Do we want to edit the side viewpoints? We can come back in here and we could go ahead and move that point if we wanted to. And then we would go back and hit next and go back to exam history here. And we come back to the screen. Let's go back to the results like where we were. 
and we were right at this screen. Okay, so when we're done, we hit home, and that's as simple as the screening is. Now, new is if we had another patient that, that came in, and we're going to do a comparative, and I'll show that in a separate video, it's easy. We just come in here and hit exam history. If they're already in there, add new exam. And it's going to jump back in here, change their pain scale, hit next, and then we're going to go ahead and digitize a second. And I'll show that in a subsequent video. That concludes how to perform your first postural screening with Posture Screen Mobile.